Who is it that doesn't slumber or sleep? Who is it that keeps your enemies at bay? I'm telling you, he is worthy to be praised. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy. Let's have, let our praise team uh, lead us into our praise and worship right now. Amen. I 
gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. In your presence, you gotta be where you are. In your arms is where I wanna be. Where you are, rock me in the cradle of your arms. I gotta be where you are. Keep me in your arms, I wanna be. Where you are, rock me in the cradle of your arms. I gotta be where you are. Keep me safe from harm. I wanna be where you are. I wanna be where you are. inside of you that for your glory I will do anything yes yes I know I will when I look back at things and I know a young man that's in this audience right now will and I would like to thank him for coming if it's okay with pastor I would like to say uh, this was my worship leader at the Taurus unit, Shannon Thompson. He's a man of God. That's why I know we don't leave excuses when people say that they cannot change their lives. Our scripture reading this morning will be come from John 14. For those who can stand, please stand. And the ones who can't, rest assured that one day you will stand in front of the Lord. John chapter 14, verses 1 through six and the words of the Lord do not let your heart be troubled trust in God trust also in me in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so I would have told you I am going to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. I need to read that again. Yeah. Right. And if, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Yes, sir. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our praise team will give us another song. Our hymn of the morning is hymn 339, Just a Little Talk with Jesus.
time that we all can talk to the Lord ourselves. We know that we have things that we have tried to fix, but it can't be fixed by us. It have to be fixed by the Lord. We made several attempts and it just wasn't in our control. But before we pray, so our prayers would not be hindered, we need to ask the Lord to forgive us for sin that we know we have committed, knowingly and unknowingly, but we know we have committed sin. So take about a few seconds for your prayers will not be hindered to ask the Lord for forgiveness. Oh God, this morning, we want to just say thank you for letting us just be in your presence one more time. Lord, we want to thank you for life because we know that you created it and you take it away. Lord, we just thank you as we laid down last night. You seen fit to circle your angels around us. And this morning, you blew breath back in us to wake us up. We had shelter. We had clothes, yeah. we had food. Some of our bills was paid, some of them was paid off. And Lord, we thank you for letting us be here. But most important, Lord, we thank you for letting us be in the house of prayer to worship you one more time. Because we understand without you, nothing is possible. And Lord, we have 
Brother Vine and son, that this morning is hurting. The passing of Henry Jackson, his grandfather. Lord, we ask that you hold him in your bosom and you keep him and let his father be able to tell him that the Lord do not make mistakes. That everything on this earth is orchestrated by the Lord. And Lord, comfort the High family and their passing of Bruce's brother, Sister Terry Rabb Williams, the passing of her husband, Sister Rosie Rodriguez, the passing of her husband. And Lord, we ask that you take care of Reverend Cheryl Thompson as she's traveling right now. We ask that you keep your hand on her. Give her what she needs to walk through whatever situation she has to. Lord, touch Sister Ernestine Lawson. Give her recovery from surgery on her wrist. Lord, the sick and shut in list that we have here at Mount Zion is long. But Lord, we know that all things are made possible through you. Lord, we know that you created all birth dates and you own all death dates. So Lord, right now, the entire family here at Mount Zion, we need prayer. Our sick and shut in list needs prayer. Our congregation, unspoken prayers that we do not hear on prayer meeting in Zoom, Lord, answer their prayers. But Lord, right now, we know we've been through this COVID and we're still going through it. But everyone that is standing in this church right now should know that you are God and God all by yourself. And have it came to us, and if it has, you had a defense where it didn't affect us. So Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, that's what you told us. Anything that we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would give it to us. And Lord, we've moaned, and you said the moans. Our Holy Spirit knows what it is. And so we're telling you right now, Lord, a lot of us has gone for us, we possibly can. We've done all we can. And you told us to bring our birds to you, and that's what we're doing this morning. So, Lord, we're going to do it this way. The disciples came to you, and they said, teach us how to pray. And you said, when you pray, pray this way. All together, our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. That's what you told us. And Lord, we trust that prayer. So right now, all we're going to do is say hallelujah, 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 amen. Our praise team now will be in song. Yeah, do, do not. 
mistakes. Yeah. Yes, 
Can you tell the Lord, I love you. I love you. And I'm going to love you forever. Forever. Forever you're my king. Forever you're my king. Can we sing it again? I love you. this verse. It says, my shelter, my shelter, my shelter forever, forever, in time of storm, in time of storm. I'm so glad that you're my shelter. So glad about this. It says your mercy. Your mercy forever shall follow me. Mercy forever. Amen. Forever you're my king. Thank <laughs> you. 
be the glory. Thank God for all of you listening and those who are present this morning. For God is worthy of all praise and I thank God for the people of God who helped me lift Jesus and who lift him in your own right. Thank God for our music ministry. Amen. What a blessing. Sometimes I just want to sit back and tell them, y'all just keep going. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. They are beautiful and such a blessing to the Lord and to the spirit of worship and praise. Pray with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come to this sermonic moment, we ask that you would guide and direct and allow your Holy Spirit to move upon us and teach us, grow us, bless us, to know more of you and to be closer to you and consequently to know more of our own life, our own struggle, and our own destiny. So thank you, God, for the privilege of calling on your name, for being able to be called sons and daughters of Almighty God. We love you. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I am delighted to share with you today, once again, uh, from the Word of God. And this time, uh, and I had not intended to do this, but circumstances seem to call for it, Uh a continuation of last week's message for such a time as this. And it's it's as though the public uh, nature of things in our country calls for that. As we look throughout this past week, we are aware of a tragedy that happened on last Sunday when Jacob Blake was shot seven times in his back by police with his children watching. And after that was rioting and protests. Yeah. Perhaps I should reverse that, protest and rioting. Yeah. Some of the rioters and looters and so forth, uh, many believe were sent to cause an uproar. Yeah. Speaking of being sent, one fella decided, and these are his words, it was his job huh. to go to Kenosha, Wisconsin and protect the good businesses. A 17 year old. He proceeded with a high powered weapon to kill two people and to shoot another uh, greatly mangling his arm and then to walk down the street brandishing the gun on his side and encountered the police with his hands up and he kept on walking. Went on and left the state and went back to his home state 
and decided, you know what, I, I've been caught on camera. Maybe I should turn myself in. And so the father of Jacob Blake, Jacob Blake Sr., said it best when he said, we live in two Americas. One for the majority uh -huh. and one for people of color, huh. Have mercy. the minority. We live in two Americas. If you happen to have the right hue, you can murder folk and walk down the street with the gun in your hand yeah. huh. and be passed up by the police, yeah. allowed to go home and have your dinner and and decide, you know, I might want to turn myself in. Yeah. But if you are a person of color, huh. you can be jogging. Huh. And it even happened here in the city of San Antonio. Yeah. Man was jogging and got put down, not shot, fortunately this time, but forcefully handcuffed and shoved into a police car, huh. and all he did was go out jogging. So it's two Americas, and it is with this backdrop that I bring this message with you this morning for such a time as this, because this was a kind of situation that existed in the book of Esther mm. as recorded in its 10 chapters. Yeah. Now the book is entitled Esther, and rightly so because of the role that she played in saving the children of Israel, but it could have easily been called the book of Mordecai. All right, all right. Because Esther did what she did because she was being prompted by Mordecai. Uh -huh. And so while last week I focused on the actions of Esther, uh -huh. this week I want to focus on the actions of Mordecai. Because Mordecai is the one who, who uh, when he found out of the plot of Haman to destroy the children of Israel <clears throat> because he didn't like Mordecai. Uh -huh. He didn't like Mordecai because uh, when a little uh, function was given and Mordecai, because of his faith in God, did not bow down, he said, why is this guy not doing what everybody else is doing? Oh, well, that's because of his faith. He said, oh. You know what, I, I, don't, I don't appreciate that. So he decided that he was going to have not just Mordecai, but all of the Jews wiped out because he didn't like Mordecai and what Mordecai did. You're going to find in the course of this message that you better be careful what you do when you plan to get somebody who is a child of God. Hello, somebody. The Bible tells us that never will the righteous be forsaken. Yeah. The Bible tells us, touch not my anointed. The Bible tells us that with God all things are possible. The Bible tells us that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible tells us that we can uh, do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. And so when our enemies would come after us, when your enemies will come after you, know this, that God understands what's going on and that God yeah. is able yes, he is. Huh. to take care of you. That's right. So let's go to our text and read and find out what happened. Right. In the book of Esther, in the fourth chapter, we find these words in verses um, 14 through 16. These are the words from the King James, I mean the New International, excuse me, version of the Bible. In Esther, uh, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. And it reads as follows. For if you remain silent at this time, yes, sir. this is Mordecai talking to Esther. Yes, sir. Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from some other place. Uh -huh. But you and your father's family will perish. Yes, yes, yes. 
And who knows but that you have come to wrong position. Yeah. Here, here it is. Yeah. For such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Yeah. Amen? Amen? For such a time as this, you may be seated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at Queen Esther. Now, you have to understand, let me uh, give you the background once more. Queen Esther is, has been chosen as uh, the king to Mordecai, uh, not Mordecai, to King Xerxes after... Um, the former queen had uh, failed to do her queenly duties. All right. uh, he, she was uh, requested by Xerxes to come to the show, to the party that he was given, and she said, I ain't got time. Come on, sir. <laughs> and so the king said, you're going to have plenty of time. Yes. Yes. You're out of the throne. Huh. The king basically uh, <laughs> uh, got uh, sent out an edict that he wanted all of the uh, virgins, the beautiful virgins of his kingdom. He had 127 providences, and he said of these providences, that's like states, if you will, cities or what have you, and of these providences, he said, go throughout all the providences and get me the most beautiful virgins that you can find. And one of them will become our queen. Take a year to get them prepared. All right. You know, to get them all perfumed up and all dolled up and all cosmetic up. Uh, 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 in modern times, uh, what she would be is a trophy wife. All right. All right. One that says, I've done good and I'm, I'm powerful, and I'm a man of influence, and I can have the most beautiful woman on the planet. All right, all right. And so that's what he did. He got Esther. And so Esther has been now in the kingdom for four years, so it's been five years since the time of the last queen, and here comes uh, Haman, with this plot to get rid of Mordecai and all of his people. Yeah. Now, you see, Xerxes queen, his trophy wife, had a victorious secret. Yeah. Yeah. And the secret was she was actually a Jew. All right. All right. And he did not know that because he couldn't tell just by looking at her uh -huh. that she was Jewish. And, and so uh, Xerxes... Uh, had put out an edict at the prompting of Haman that the children of Israel would be destroyed at a certain time soon after he had been told of what uh, Haman wanted to do. All right, all right. And so, as I said, this is part two of For Such a Time as This. We want to look at the role that Mordecai played in this pivotal time of the kingdom and the development of the people of God. Now listen, sometimes uh, folk who are not out front, folk that you don't see, are just as important as the ones that you do see. Sometimes the people who have the most influence are not the ones who have the most rank or the ones who have the most money or the ones who have the most apparent power. But sometimes the influence is from behind the curtain. All right, all right. This was the case because Mordecai was the influence that caused uh, Esther to have the fortitude of her character that she had. Mordecai was the force because he was the one who raised Esther. He was the one who taught her. He was the one who gave her her faith. So much so that Esther said, I know that 
uh, when I go to the king and when I present to him and not having been asked to come before his court, I know what the law says, that if you do that and the king does not give you his scepter raised up, then you are to be killed. And she said, and I love the way she said it. She said, if I perish, yeah, yeah. I perish. But the reason why she had the strength on the inside to say that is because Mordecai had taught her. Mordecai had influenced her and Mordecai told her, girl, don't you be nobody's fool. Know that if you survive this thing, your people will perish and eventually you will too. Let that be a message for all of America for the uh, 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 Caucasians who are sitting back watching this black experience for those who have money and power who are sitting back. Don't let anybody fool you. The people who are evil, the people who want to do wrong, the people who want to take advantage of others, they will take advantage of the weaker ones first, but they won't stop there. They will keep going until they get everybody. For such a time as this. Yeah. You know what is beautiful about what's happening in America today is that our young people are rising up. Yeah. And I'm not certainly not talking about that 17 year old uh, uh, idiot who decided to uh, uh, take the law into his own hands. All right. No, I'm talking about the uh, uh, National Basketball Association. I'm talking about the WNBA. I'm talking about the uh, Major League Baseball players and the soccer players and the tennis players, all of whom stopped play and said, guess what? This is important enough because of what happened to Jacob Blake and because of the plight of African Americans in our country and because of the systemic racism that is problematic with the police force. Yeah. We need to focus, focus attention on this so much so until we're not going to play anymore. Until somebody pays attention to what's happening to our people because they realize that were it not for their sports and their money, all they got to do is go out and walk out and somebody going to see them and before they see their sports or their accomplishment or their money, they see the color of their skin. That's it. And they're going to react to that. And so I'm proud of our athletes who are standing up like athletes before in the 1968 Olympics and um, Muhammad Ali when he refused to go into the draft and others, Arthur Ashe who have stood up in uh, protest to apartheid and other instances, athletes throughout the ages in America yes. have stood up yes. against racism. Yes, and so here's the case though and I want to make this and go and take my seat. Mordecai decided that he was going to get the people together. Yes. So they fasted and they prayed for three days. Then Esther went into uh, the courtyard to see the king. And he received her. He, he raised his scepter. <laughs> Excuse me, so she could come in. And when she came in, he asked her, what is it that you want to talk with me about? And she wouldn't tell him. She said, King, I'll tell you later, but go ahead and uh, let's gather for a dinner and then I'll tell you at that. She said, uh, let's come and, and, and watch this now. She said, and, and invite Haman. Uh, I want Haman to come, come <laughs> to my dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Haman went back to his family. Uh, look at Esther chapter 5 and verse 4 and it tell you about that but Haman went back to his family and said look at what's happening to me yeah, yeah. Haman said uh, for a minute there I thought I was in trouble yeah, yeah. but guess what the boss see Haman was number two in charge uh -huh. Haman was uh, the number two guy in the kingdom Haman went out and he was 
the scripture says, happy and high in spirits. Yes, and uh, when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate, uh, he, he didn't like that. And he, he, he saw that Mordecai didn't show any fear to him, but he went back to his family and said, guess what? I'm in better standing with the king than I thought I was. Yes. And uh, because even the queen <laughs> has asked for me. So he said, what I'm going to do is, uh, I, I, I tell you what, and, and, and see, if you read the scriptures, you'll find out that he so hated Mordecai, he asked his people, what should he do? And they, they told him, <coughs> why don't you uh, prepare a hangman's noose so that you can hang him? Yeah. Yeah. And then when he heard that the king was having this gathering, uh, uh, he thought, well, it must be for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the king asked him uh, before the gathering, he said, Mordecai, I'm not Mordecai, but Haman, uh, what should I do for someone who is prized in my kingdom? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and to see the reason why the king was asking that, because uh, while Haman did not know it, Esther had been talking to the king. And Esther had told the king that there is someone in your kingdom who has done a great deed for you and has never been recognized. Yeah. What is that deed? You see, earlier at the beginning of the chapter, there were some folk who were gathered around and Mordecai happened to be within earshot of them and they were guards for the king and they had uh, devised a plot to kill the king and they were going to sneak up on him and kill him and to assassinate him in Esther chapter 6 and verse 2. And so if you read that, you'll find out that Mordecai went and told the king of the plot that was to happen to him, the king had those folks executed and uh, the king survived. And so the king was reminded of that and he said, you know, I haven't ever recognized Mordecai. Yes. I, I need to do that. So he brought in his number one guy, which was Haman, and said, Haman, how, what would you think I should do to recognize someone who has not been recognized, but who had done a great thing for the king and for the kingdom? And Haman uh, uh, said, hmm, he's talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> he's talking about me. I tell you what, he, boy, he started prancing in the spirit. He said, I tell you what, he said, let's make this thing really good since it's for me. Since it's for me, let's make it good. He said, King, you need to throw a party like nobody's ever seen. Yeah. King, what you need to do is uh, uh, you need to uh, 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 get a horse and and ride on it in a raw crest and place it on his head. And uh, you need to make it so that uh, he gets robed and, and entrusted with the king's uh, nobles and princes and let them uh, robe this man to the king's delight to honor and lead him on the horses through the city and streets and proclaim that this is what is done for the man who delights and honors the king, Esther 6 and 9. And so what he's telling uh, the king is, you ought to throw a big shindig and, and, and make it so that everybody will understand. And the king said, good idea. And uh, so the king uh, decided that that's what's what he was going to do. Uh, and, and Mordecai puffed himself out. He said, now listen, honey, get ready. Get the kids ready because I, I don't want y'all to miss this. We, we're going to have a great event. So come on. And, and he put them all together and he knew that the invite for the queen's dinner was coming up and he dressed himself and went there so that the king and the queen could reveal that he was the one yeah. and so he decided that he was going to do that uh, and he went to the dinner when he went to the dinner the queen finally began to talk yeah. and she said king I have something to tell you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh she said, there has been somebody here who deserves to be recognized. And boy, old, old Haman, he, he puffed his chest up, man. He's feeling good. Yeah, she about to drop it now. Everybody going to know what I am and what I've done. And um, she said, there was a gentleman um, who's never been recognized and Mordecai stuck his chest out a little bit more. And she said, that gentleman, uh, not Mordecai, but Haman rather, she said, that gentleman is Mordecai yeah. because he kept the people from uh, assassinating you years ago. Uh -huh. 
and he should be on it. And by then, you could see Haman's face just, mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, just drooped down. What? Mordecai? But the queen wasn't through, see? The queen said, and uh, by the way, king, uh, there's an edict that went out to destroy Mordecai and all of his people. And uh, I, I want to tell you something, king. Uh, here's my Victoria's Secret. I'm, I'm one of them. And I'm begging you, King, not to destroy this Mordecai and not to, good God, watch God, watch God, not to destroy Mordecai and his people. And the king said, of course not. This man needs to be honored. This man is outstanding. And the king said, who in the world? <laughs> who in the world put out such an eating? Who made that happen? And she said, him? Haman, the one who is at this dinner, he is the one who put out that edict. He is the one who said that the one who is responsible, king, for you being alive today, that he and all his people should be killed. Yeah. And folks, the end of the story is this. The king said, how dare you, Haman? Yeah. Guess what? It ain't going to happen. Yeah. But I tell you what is going to happen. The king said, I'm going I'm to make an example of you. And, uh, and uh, some other folk was in there, and uh, the king said, what should I do? And the other folks said, you know, uh, there's this great big old hangman's uh, place and noose and thing that had been set up uh, right out in the center court. <coughs> and uh, Mar uh, uh, Haman was planning on hanging Mordecai right there for all the people to see. And the king said, good idea. But it's not going to be Mordecai that's going to hang. It's going to be Haman. Yeah. Haman yeah. was going to hang yeah. on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. What am I trying to say? You can't do anything against God's people and get away with it. Yeah. What am I trying to say? That the ditch that you dig for somebody else, you're going to fall in yourself. What am I trying to say? That God will always protect his people. God will always look out for those who are less fortunate. God is always has a ram in the bush. And the very uh, problems that you try to cause for God's people, guess what? Touch not God's anointed. Yeah. Guess what? No weapon formed against them yeah. shall prosper. Yeah. Guess what? I can do all things through Christ Jesus yeah. who strengthens me. Yeah. So look to the hills from which cometh your help. Yeah. Your help cometh yeah. of the Lord. Know that God is able to defend you against enemies seen and unseen. Know that even in times like this, God is saying, I want a people like Mordecai, like Esther, who will fall on their knees and pray and call on my name in the midst of trouble, in the midst of hardship, in the midst of despair, in the midst of loss, in the midst of being done wrong, and who will say, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help, my help cometh of the Lord. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whither shall I go? Father, I'm calling on you, saying, defend me and help me to overcome. And guess what? Like in the case of Esther and Mordecai, for such a time as this, you ought to stand up and be heard. For such a time as this, you ought to stand up and be seen. For such a time as this, it's time for people to stop letting the racism and the systemic uh, problems that this country has given to people of color, it's time for it to be over with. And it's time for such a time as this for people to stand up and say, we're not going to take it anymore. Our theme for the year 2020 is clear vision for 2020, and I guess it has come to that. Yes. We're able to see clearly yes. what's happening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're able, because it's put in our face, yes, to say, America, stop being a country that wants to be first class, but makes people of color second class yes, citizens. Yes, it's time for America yes. to have clear vision. And the only way America can have clear vision if Americans have clear vision. For such a time as this, 
Let's stand up. Let's vote. Let's stand up. Let's vote out those who do not do their job and vote in those who will. For such a time as this, let's speak out against atrocities and evil. For such a time as this, let us be the ones that the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen? Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Our choir is now going to sing our invitation on him. We invite you to come and be a part of Almighty God. myself asking forgiveness of what I've done wrong and laying myself before you saying I am yours 
This is our prayer. Saying, save us. Save me. And I accept Jesus Christ yes. as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And amen. Thank you. Oh, right now, today, today just come. Just come. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, choir. Right now, today, just come. We want to invite our members and friends who so desire to certainly share in your tithes and your offering at this time, any gifts that you would like to uh, donate or give, we invite you to go to our webpage to uh, Mount Zion First Baptist Church uh, webpage and to www.mfirstbaptist.rr.com and that will show you where you can make your donations. Uh, it supports the ministries that we do our food bank ministry, our Haiti ministry to a school, an orphanage, and a church there in Haiti, our ministry to the prison fellowship, all of these things. That being said, we're grateful to God. And let us pray for our country, for the perpetrators and the victims of evil. Because everybody needs prayer. Let us pray that God will allow these things for once and for all to be dealt with in our country so that we can be the United States of America. Don't forget to vote because if you don't vote, then you don't have any reason to ever complain. People have died for you to have that right. And there's still time to register to vote. Even if you didn't vote into, in the primaries and the other things, if you've not registered, I think you have until uh, October the 9th to register to vote. I may not be correct on that date, the 5th, uh, but you have until October the 5th to register to vote. So register to vote and then vote, amen? And vote early, vote early. Mail-in vote, or, or when the early voting starts, go in and vote early. That way, your vote will count. Amen. God be the glory. Let us receive our benediction at this time. We're grateful to God for all that he's done. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that for such a time as this, you've allowed us to come together, uh, be it virtual or in person, that we might praise you. We thank you for the example of Esther and Mordecai to show us that even in a, desire, a, a, a dire situation, that you are still God, you still have power, and you can still turn a horrible situation around and make it a blessing. We're grateful, oh God, and we pray that you would help us to be ready and to do what needs to be done at such a time as this. <laughs>